roller derby, and they start out to race each other on roller skates around the track. The rink's as fast as grease lightning, and as in a six-day bike race, the big thrill is a jam and a spill. Here it is! Well, yeah, it started off back in the 1930s, and it used to be in the States, and it used to be co-ed on bank track, and it was actually sort of scripted, so it was a lot like wrestling is, although some people would argue that wrestling's not scripted. Um, it then used to travel around big uh, American cities, almost like a touring sort of carnival. It died out after a while, sort of a resurgence in the 70s, came back around again and then died out again. Well, let's see, Derby was started back in Austin, Texas in 2001. And it was um, the original idea to have a Derby game um, was this guy's idea. Um, it was for like a one-time fundraiser, actually, um, and it was supposed to be like a big old carnival act, and it was supposed to be like one of the sideshows of the carnival act. So these 40 ladies got together, and they were going to be the ones in the derby game. And then the guys split town, and the 40 ladies were like, this is awesome, we love playing roller derby, we want to keep on doing this. Girls in Texas decided to sort of, you know, make it rise again and started it off as a very sort of like DIY punk sort of, um, you know, from the roots. Uh, organization and got that up and running and then since then spread like wildfire across the states obviously expats from that country move to other places springs up in London starts to spread across the UK and then into Europe and beyond it's fun it's a good way to kick back with the ladies Nothing for me, I love it, yeah. My roller derby is was terrifying tank. I love it when men help because I get to hit them. It's pretty kick ass. I love Dick Bandai. It's pretty violent. <laughs> Doesn't really work over this side of the pond uh, because ballistic whistle would be ballistic whistle. You'd have never caught me in hot pants a few months ago. Do you understand all the derby? Not at all. First whistle blows and the pack takes off. Then a second whistle blows and the jammers take off. Once the jammer breaks through the pack, she hauls ass around the track a second time and tries to score. For every player on the opposing team the jammer passes, she gets a point. To get lead jamming, you must pass all blockers, so that's blockers from your team and their team legally and in bounds. If you get lead jam, you can call it off. Uh, so you can make them get no points, so you get four points. The idea is um, you'll be helping your jammer through it by giving the whip or pushes, but at the same time, you need to stop the opposing jammer, so you're booty blocking or hitting right the way. The first time I saw roller derby was when there was still just one league in existence. Um, I was in Texas photographing a tattoo convention and then the game absolutely blew my mind. I could probably get into that, knocking people over on skate. To be physical and to have an aggressive side and that be a positive thing, definitely that's what most attraction is in. There were girls skating around in fishnets and going bah! And I just thought that looks amazing. I was quite nervous that it's a crap game because nobody heard of it, you know what I mean? It's actually quite tactical and it's, you know, it's growing uh, really fast in the UK so I'm so happy I joined. It's the best day, best thing I've done. <laughs> How does it make me feel? Um... It's got to be the best feeling that I've ever had. I've never done sports before in my entire life. Uh, 
Um, and I couldn't be without roller derby now, ever. I'd have to be involved in some capacity, even if my legs fell off. <laughs> If I miss one practice, I'm so grumpy and, you know, you don't want me to be around you. It's horrible. Oh, I, don't know. I don't know what to say. What does it make me feel? God knows. The look on people's faces when they realise that they can do something they've been trying for weeks to do. And it goes over in your, your everyday life. It, it, gives you, it gives you the confidence to try things and to push yourself just a little bit harder. It, it changes people's lives. It's amazing. <laughs> Favourite part? Favourite thing? The after parties. <laughs> I would have to say hitting. I love hitting. Hitting people? Definitely hitting people. <laughs> We've got an hour of knocking the crap out of each other and people fall down and people get hurt and Everyone just kind of at the end of it gets up. Everyone's really, really happy that everyone's done well. I mean, you hear girls being like, oh my God, you're not the crap out of me. That was awesome. I put like my face paint on and then that puts me in the character of who, like the wolf. And, um, and then once that's, that is my favorite bit. You can be this really lovely person off track, but when you're on track, you this you can be this alter ego who hits girls and who wears hot pants, who's a bit crazy. But like you, you can leave that on the track if you want, and you can be a completely different person somewhere else. I think it's in a way it's a way of escaping, and um, it just gives you a bit of an outlet. There's there's definitely like a mean streak that comes out when I'm on the track, and I'm really focused and really. Um, bloodthirsty I guess. The leadership skills and the kind of the aggression and the lack of fear that you really need to have if you're going to play this sport. I think there are things that I have but they just kind of come out more in Derby. My main job and priority otherwise is as a mum and that alter ego as it were just gives me an escape, gives me a chance to be something else. Not necessarily something better but something different and um, it brings that excitement into your life. I'm a speech and language therapist. I, work, I have an office job. During the day, I work uh, at a magazine in Chicago. I'm a marketing manager. I work in social housing. I'm going to be starting a PhD soon. I'm a research scientist. I'm a primary school teacher. Theatre technician. Systems engineer. I work as an admin assistant for the NHS. <laughs> I don't think there's any stereotypical roller derby girl. I think it, anyone and everyone can do it and should do it, really. In the States, in the beginning, it attracted a lot of like alternative types, like punk rockers, you know, people who really were attracted to the look or the toughness of it. But that very, very quickly kind of like disappeared and we started to, we started to attract people from all walks of life. I think it's women who aren't afraid to uh, explore something that they haven't been raised to explore in, in an aggressive side or an athletic side. I think generally in its, in its kind of public base, roller derby is quite alternative. A lot of people like fans or skaters will get into it as a result of it being counterculture and then after you've been in it for a while, you start to realise that it doesn't really need to be a counterculture kind of thing. You know, it's, it's a pretty cool sport and the mainstream is going to catch on eventually. Our culture isn't very used to seeing women play contact or aggressive sports, um, so that is unique about it. And then also it has a very DIY, do-it-yourself kind of um, feel to it, especially did about eight years ago when I first started. And so that at first seemed like it was maybe contradictory or in opposition of other sport, but really um, I think deep down derby is just like any other, you know, s hardcore extreme involved team sport. My mum didn't know what it was at first, she thought it was a disco, we just skated around, <laughs> I rolled it as yeah. well. <laughs> She was like, oh, no, 
know where you get all the bruises from. My sisters think I'm crazy because I'm like I'm way the smallest in the family. And they're like, oh, you'll break and you won't be able to do that. My grandma was a bit worried at first because she thought that I would break myself in some way. Um, but my mum thinks it's really cool because she likes she she really likes the whole sort of stylized aspect to it. Um, uh, I'm probably not the best person to ask about the fashion. It is quite fun dressing up. <laughs> Even if I'm skating around hitting girls, I want to look alright when I'm doing it. So yeah. I don't want to look like a mess. Yeah. A lot of girls that came along initially to our practices were like, yeah, I want to be a roller girl, I want to wear, you know, the fishnets and have the tiny shorts that my bum hangs out of and stuff. If you've got like an internal game like within your league where two teams in your league are playing each other, it might be a little bit more of a spectacle because you're trying to develop your fan base and stuff like that. The reason that they had the first derby game was um, to be a sideshow in a carnival and it was very thematic. So the first thing that they did was pick out the team names and then they picked out the team themes and then they created their uniforms based off the themes. And so that's like, that's the origin of our culture. What was the last one in Newcastle? Yeah, was there? Yeah. It was in Houghton Blocker, Hidden Jammer. Yeah. So it was all Japanese, oh, so martial arts and stuff. Yeah. So everyone dressed up for that. Because you feel you can wear what you want on the track, then it spreads out into your real life and people are more inclined to wear things. They might go, oh no, I'm too old for that, and I'm too fat for that, and I'm... they go, I like it, I'll wear it. Some teams do adopt a, a single uniformed look. Other teams really have like, a, obviously, a, a, a coloured T-shirt, but then they can express themselves within that. For, for the outside looking in, then you're just like, oh, a lot of women hitting each other, and fishnets and hot pants, how sexy. Part of making the concession of like, maybe wearing something that's like a little less intimidating or a little less fringe kind of helps like the masses accept the sport more and which is positive and, and important for the sport to grow. I will hope that in the future, less focus is put on what we're wearing and more focus is put on what we're doing. The Women's Flat Track Derby Association actually requires that it be skater owned and operated. So um, that's something that keeps the sport, I think, a do-it-yourself sport. Um, and it's also empowering to know that we can produce an event, start to finish, um, all on our own. This particular inception of Derby was started by women. The leagues are owned and operated by the women who skate in them. Um, so yeah, they're, they're creating the sport. They're not just embracing it, they're in control. That is. There are men's leagues, but they don't have as much, they don't have as, as many people doing it or as much organization, I think, and, or as much popularity. I do a little bit of men's derby, but I would never give up coaching a woman's team for anything. What has been done up to this point has been done pretty much 100% by women, and they've done it well. You know, they've progressed the sport beyond anyone beyond what anyone could have imagined like 10 years ago. There are some women that get pretty upset when men start skating um, because they say that it's our sport, the one sport that women can really play. Um, but I, I love it when men help because I get to hit them. As it grows and expands, it's gonna incorporate men a lot more in it. I don't know that, that the co-ed nature of it will ever be back to what it was like in the 50s and 60s. I think that like this movement has moved as like uh, something that's been really female dominated and I feel like it's probably going to continue that way. If the femininity and the dressing up and the girliness was taken away, I would be really disappointed. I'm not one of those girls who thinks that we have to be at the Olympics and have to be athletes. Um, if you want to be respected, then in a way you have to let that slide a bit. But me personally, I, I don't care. I think girls that are feminine get just as involved in the sport now as girls that aren't feminine. But what you'll find is the, the girls that stick are the girls that have like an internal fight. The men that see uh, women doing roller derby, I think they have a lot more respect for things that women are actually capable of doing and we're not all delicate and you know, we're not going to break if we fall over or what have you. I mean, 
mean, whenever I mention Derby and I mention kind of this full contact, it's always the men who are like, oh my goodness, that's really scary. Do the women not like really, really get hurt? Have you seen the girls here? They hit quite hard. I think one of them nearly knocked my neck out. It was quite, <laughs> wasn't paying attention. She just flew at me like a ninja. I think it's kind of quite an empowering thing to be a part of and I think it's really helped kind of show that women are just as strong as men. We may not, you know, physically necessarily be as strong as men in certain traits, but we're just as capable of doing full contact sport and taking hits and taking falls and getting straight back up and getting on with it as men are. A really good thing about the sport is it lets girls be the person that they want to be, if you know what I mean. They're not afraid of being who they want to be, they don't feel like they have to hold back who they are. My background is raised as a pastor's kid, so I definitely hit a lot of stuff. Um, I didn't come out as strong as I wanted to. As far as being gay, I hid a lot of that. Um, but once I got into roller derby, I had friends that loved me for who I was and my person, so I definitely came out um, and didn't care what other people thought of me. I was able to express exactly who I was without worrying about people judging me. So I think roller derby does have that, is no matter what um, you're trying to portray, whether your sexuality or who you are as a person, I think having people around you that love you and really care about you as a person, which is exactly what roller derby is, it's a group of women besides the sport is that really care about you and a whole new friendship that you create. So I think that you're, um, you're more comfortable about coming out as who you are as a person. I think you need to have that kind of like internal willingness to succeed and willingness to really work hard and willingness to like get 10 shades of crap knocked out of you and still get up, you know what I mean? Uh, that, that's pretty much what, what makes a good roller girl is someone who can get battered for two minutes and get out there and do it again for another two minutes, you know, without it affecting them. As people train more and they become better athletes, like the sport just gets more violent and more hard hitting. Three girls on our team have had broken ankles. Um, we've had a torn ligament in the knee, um, we've had a broken wrist and a broken collarbone. I think that's it. <laughs> I know as far as me hitting people, I've broken three girls' ribs just from hitting them in the, ch in the sternum. Yeah, you get hurt. This is my maybe third injury this year. So. Uh, well, I have partially a black eye right now. <laughs> um, I have a metal plate in my shoulder. Uh, broke my ankle, broke my nose, a couple black eyes. So I've been through a lot. <laughs>
I think for women as a whole, um, it's, it just makes you stronger somehow. It's a sport that's quite aggressive, so I guess in a stereotypical way it could be seen as more like a man's sport, because it's not just like fannying about with a badminton racket. Sorry, I really hate badminton. Most kind of team sports are, for women at least, are played at a younger level, you know, when we're kind of children or even teenagers. Um, you know, you hear about guys that have their football leagues or their rugby leagues, um, but you don't meet a lot of women who necessarily participate in kind of those, you know, like a netball league or a football league. So I think that roller derby is great because it provides an outlet. There's people from the age of 18 up to, well, I'm 41. And I'm sure there are people around the same age as me. It, it's because it's so all-inclusive. It, it doesn't stop anybody doing it to whatever level they can achieve. And that's what makes it really good for women. For me personally, the team, the girls' team sports just weren't as interesting. Um, and aren't generally as celebrated in popular culture. And if you're, unless you're a very motivated person to do running or an individual sport, then I think you're gonna, you are gonna drop out of it. Like football, obviously very male orientated, and people are really encouraged to keep doing it. But there's not many women's sports, I don't think, that are kind of like encouraged in so strongly by society. It's not like other sports, you just kind of play with each other with this. It's like, you know, I, if I needed anything, I could ring up yeah. the girl and they'd help me out. For me, it's like when you see like football, they hate other teams, like say Liverpool and Manchester hate yeah. each other. But we love Manchester, like everyone likes everyone, you never boo another team, you always cheer for another team. I think it's, it's a massive community. My mum thought that she'd go and watch a game and it'd be loads of skinny girls but you've got all different shapes and sizes and I know a lot of girls who are a bit bigger and they've got the most confidence in the world. If you want to be involved in Derby you've got to be able to organise things, you've got to be able to work with a group of women and take responsibility and use all your skills and it's not just about the skating so I think that's definitely, I think seeing empowered women who can like run their own organisation is definitely a good thing for young girls to be seeing. In Texas, they actually just started up um, in like a women's high school. They started up like a high school roller derby team, which I think is just incredible. And I would I would love to think of women being able to have this like in their younger years and growing up doing this, just like guys can do football or rugby or baseball or whatever. It's it's finally a sport where where we where the sport is ours and not like oh it's derby for women. It's derby and it's a women's sport. If men want to do it, it's derby for men instead. I think it's we're taking it back to us and make it our own.
the dollars There is but one concern I have just discovered Some girls are bigger than others Some girls are bigger than others Some girls' mothers Are bigger than other girls' mothers Some girls are bigger than others Some girls are bigger than others Some girls' mothers are bigger than other girls' the mothers. As Anthony said to Cleopatra, as he opened the crater veil.